Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this video on fundamental analysis deep dive. I'm going to be showing you how I, you know, predicted price directions on a certain currency pair using fundamental analysis and supply and demand. And I've been getting a lot of um, uh, questions regarding fundamental analysis. And I'm going to go and make a bold statement that you're not going to find anything like this video online, right? Um, I've watched a lot of fundamental analysis videos um, and nothing is going to be like this video. So stay tuned and you're going to get a real insight into, uh, you know, real fundamental analysis for um, you know swing trading right it's fundamental analysis macroeconomic data is not um, you know fundamentals don't change um, every single day or even every single week you I have a longer term um, view and then what I do is uh, you know basically uh, what I'm going to show you now so let's get into it um, euro dollar 2019 downtrend could this have been predicted? Of course it could. And um, not to say that I uh, am right on all predictions. In fact, I don't even like using the word predictions because um, what I tend to do is just, it's just basically the balance of probabilities of one thing happening over another. Of course I can be wrong, can be right, but when I'm right, we try to make as much, you know, as we can uh, when you're right than when you're wrong. We're risk managers when it comes to, um, you know, trading. but. The question is, is why did price of the euro dollar fall throughout 2019? And for those of you who have watched my videos for long enough, you'll definitely know that all this year, in fact, for the past two and a half years, all I've been doing is shorting the euro dollar. I've ignored demand zones and I've been shorting the dollar. And I'm going to actually show you exactly why I was doing that um, throughout 2019. So how do we determine price direction so what i have to do is i have to compare gross domestic product inflation and interest rates because that is what drives um currencies yeah that you have to in every single market in every single market you have to determine what it is that gives a currency its value. So what we're doing is we're comparing the Euro GDP inflation and interest rate figures with the US dollar GDP interest rate and inflation figures. All right, and this isn't gonna get complex or anything like that. I'm gonna try and break it down as simply as I can. And if you wanna go into a bit more depth, I do have a free um, you know, trading course, Fundamental Analysis. The link is right here and it's in the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube. But let's get into it quickly. And so, um, what we're looking at is we're gonna be comparing GDP, right? So gross domestic product. And every economy has an, you know, economic phases. So you have the boom phase, contraction, recession, bust slump, recovery, and expansion, again, back into the boom phase. So um, what we need to determine is where a country is in its economic cycle. So, um, and we do that by looking at basically just comparing it's uh, where it is uh, GDP wise. So this is a great site trading economics. And what I did was I compared the Eurozone um, GDP growth rate to the United States growth rate. Now on the left axis here, you've got the Euro um, uh, numbers figures. So the Euro at the moment, we'll say at the moment, but in, back in July, uh, sorry, January, 2019, the GDP growth rate was 0 0.3, whereas the US at the time was probably, right, go like this, one second, let me just bring up this tool, maybe around about here, well, maybe about around about 2%, yeah? So instantly you've got the um, Euro, right? Euro the growth rate is at 0.3%. And you've got the US, which is at around about 2%. So instantly, if we're looking at a country's economic health, which one do you want to be a buyer of? Which one is doing better? Yeah, it's obviously 
the dollar, right? The euro isn't doing so well. So um, that should then give you, you know, the uh, a direction or part of the direction of which way you really want to be uh, buying or selling, yeah? Because the closer you are a country is to a recession, yeah? Closer it is to a recession, the worse it's gonna be for that currency. And the closer it is towards the, you know, expansion and the boom phase of the economic cycle, yeah? That's where investment and the currency is going to strengthen. So what you're doing is you're comparing, you know, divergences in, um, you know, where a country is economically. So the next thing that we have to also look at is inflation. So we're looking at an inflation comparison. Yeah, and you can see that with the euro, um, when it comes when it comes to inflation. Uh, into 2019 to so April, so beginning of 2019, inflation expectations were, well, expectation, but the figures were um, at 1.4%. Now, a central bank has an inflation target of 2%, yeah? They deem that to be, you know, the um, optimum inflation per year. So um, central banks will do certain things, and I'm going to get into that in the next slide, which is basically... Uh, try to stimulate inflation by hiking, holding, or cutting interest rates. But in this slide, we need to understand that central banks have an inflation target of 2%. So again, at a certain point in time, yeah, in the beginning of the year, um, you had the January, you had the euro, which was at 1.4%. And then you had the um, uh, the US dollar, which if we go to the left, was around 1.6% at the time, yeah? So again, we had Euro 1.4, oops, sorry, let's delete that. Euro 1.4, uh, 1.4. When it comes to inflation, and remember their target is two percent, and the dollar, which was at one point six percent. So whoever's closest to this two percent figure is better, right? So the euro was furthest away, so they're not doing so well. So out of GDP and inflation. Yeah, the euro is losing on both accounts and the dollar is the stronger out of the two. So next we have, and I alluded to it, but we have interest rate comparison. So interest rates um, uh, are used by you know central banks to um, stimulate the economy, yeah, or cool the economy. So interest rates are basically the return that you get back on your money if you invest in, you know, uh, if you put it in the bank or if you invest in a certain currency. So the higher the interest rate, the better, yeah? So if I'm putting my money into a currency, what currency am I gonna get the best return on? Or investors, all right, are gonna get the best return on. So the European Central Bank were offering 0%, all right? If you put your money into the euro, yeah, they're going to be offering you 0% in January. That was that. Yeah. Whereas the US dollar, on the other hand, we're going to be offering you at least 2 point, maybe 2.5, somewhere like that in January. So again, euro equals 0% and the dollar equals around about 2.5% at a time. Yeah? So, by all measures, by all economic measures, the dollar is, you know, the, the stronger out of the two. It just it just makes sense. You know, you, you can't like argue with, with the data, right? The data is the data, and this is where um, you know the country's doing better, they're getting a better return, etc. So it's a no-brainer now to 
actually put your money into the dollar over the um, over the euro as we expect the dollar to strengthen or be the stronger out of the two. So what I decided to do was put together, um, I'm going to go through pretty much 12 slides and um, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm going to go through January, pretty much through to December 2019 and I'm going to show you um, what the, 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 the the data was as well as what the fundamentals were. Now, what you need to understand is that we are buying, um, we are trying to predict future value, yeah? So it's not necessarily about sometimes, it's not always about uh, uh, un like where we are right now, but where we are potentially going to be in the future. The, the, the whole thing of buy the rumor, sell the fact, for example, that traders tend to talk about is you're trying to identify where there is a bargain and once other traders now you know catch up to the bargain as in as far as you know um uh, by the fact it's already too late we buy the rumor yeah or we buy the narrative and as long as the narrative continues so let's say for example at the beginning of the year um there was rumors and talks that uh, Germany were going to be going into a recession. Uh, the European Central Bank were going to, um, you know, add more stimulus, which is basically they run out of interest rate bullets. So basically, they're trying to make their currency cheaper. And by the way, going back to, you know, interest rates as well, right? Interest rates and a cut, hike, or a hold in interest rates is a central bank who are the pretty much the controllers of the currency. Yeah, they're trying. They're actually telling you that they want to weaken the currency if they're trying to cut interest rates if they are hiking interest rates they want to strengthen the um the the, the currency yeah so a central bank policy never ever disregard these are the smartest guys in the room yeah these are the guys that look at all you know the economy they look at all the data way beyond what we can look at and really fathom and understand in 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 in, in a certain detail this is what they live for yeah they got access to all the data and based on that, they are telling you what they are planning to do. We are planning to either hike, hold, or cut. And if a currency, and again, this is in the uh, um, the fundamental analysis um, course, but if a central bank, yeah, typically, if a central bank is cutting interest rates, it means uh, it is associated with a potentially weakening economy, yeah. So cuts are potentially a weakening economy and they need to weaken the currency, yeah, in order to produce uh, inflation if they're below their inflation target, as well as, you know, stimulate the economy, cheap borrowing, etc. And if they are hiking interest rates, it means that they are trying to strengthen the, cu the, the, the currency. Yeah, R-E-N-G, G-T-H, sorry about this, All right? Th, I did it the way around. Don't know what's going on. Anyways, they're trying to strengthen their currency, right? So that is pretty much um, how uh, interest rates and inflation and um, and GDP uh, work and their relationship to each other. So future value. We need to start reading news and understanding the narrative. Once we know the data, is understand the narrative and have a trade idea, i.e., the dollar are going to potentially, you know, continue to hike rates or hold rates compared to the European Central Bank, who are looking to potentially cut rates or add stimulus. Yeah, which is basically weakening their currency, and we need to also be mindful of what the economy is doing. Um, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, central banks making their uh, decisions as to what they exactly they're going to do with interest rates. So the two things we're watching really is inflation and GDP, and that should have an effect on what the central banks are going to do with their interest rates. So January 2019 and January 3rd of 2019. So this was from the New York Times and uh, Washington um, is, by the way, as well, just before we get into that, so January, you know, the, the, the Fed were basically hiking rates, right, and strengthening their currency while the central, but the European Central Bank were at zero, 
Yeah, so just keep that in mind. So, uh, in, in suspending its previous plan to continue raising rates further this year, the Federal Reserve signaled that its march towards higher interest rates may be ending sooner than expected. Okay, so they're in a good place, ending, uh, you know, hiking or trying to not necessarily strengthen their currency. It doesn't mean that it's going to get that it's going to get weaker, right? It just means that they're happy with where things are, right? And at the same time, you have the European Central Bank (ECB) Draghi warns on risking of rising risks to growth amid global headwinds. So the the headlines were the risks around in the euro area have moved to the downside uh, on on account of the persistent uncertainties related to geopolitical factors, etc. And then Draghi also reaffirmed. Uh, the central bank starts to keep key interest rates at their present levels throughout the summer of 2019 and longer if necessary yeah so they're telling you the central bank mario draghi ex uh, you know head of the ecb is telling you he's doing his predictions yeah it's not me making my predictions he's saying based off of the data this is what is likely to happen then all we have to do yeah is the idea is there the trade idea is there, dollar strength, euro weakness. Now we just go through every you know week and every month, we look at certain economic data that reinforces that narrative or if it goes against the narrative. So at this point in time, January, beginning of the year, the central bank, the European central bank could be saying, all right, then we'll be, we're planning to hold rates for longer because they don't expect inflation to necessarily, you know, creep up. But inflation could have crept up, yeah, January, February, March, April, May. And then as the data comes out, then their stance changes. You follow me? So even though they make their predictions, it's not set in stone. It's data dependent, depending on obviously the data that comes out. And then they start to analyze every month, every week, etc. what their policies will be in the future. But as long as you have a trade idea first, dollar strength, euro weakness, and then what you do is you go to, you know, the uh, the data every week, every month, and then look to see if the data is confirming your narrative. So that was January, February. Jamie, uh, Fed's James Bullard says he's pleased with rates at these levels and it's time to wait and see. So they're happy, happy with the economy, happy with rates. No need to, you know, strengthen it, just holding rates. Brilliant. Yeah. European Central Bank, on the other hand, ECB rate moves hinges on downturn. So timing of the European Central Bank's first post-crisis rate hike hinges on whether, they speak about a rate hike, but if you go deeper into this, it actually um, talks about the slowdown. So it hinges on the Eurozone current, current Eurozone's current slowdown uh, is a blip more than a protracted downturn. So obviously, you know, there were, there were concerns that the, in February, that the, uh, the current slowdown they were hoping that it was just a blip, right? Or they were praying that it was just a blip, or if they were, they were they were concerned whether it was a protracted downturn, right? So this is ECB's policy maker, Francois Villeroy de Galhau, I think. I'm sorry, but his name, but interviewed and published on Sunday. So the ECB uh, has said it, it aims to keep interest rates at current record lows at least through the summer again so they're reiterating that it's they're not looking to hike rates at all they're trying to keep it at its lows again the federal reserve have, had, have got rates at 2.5 percent and the european union have got rates at zero where are you putting your money march again future value divergence yeah so we've got europe I'm sorry, the, the Fed. So there's an article that says, why has the Fed turned away from interest rate rises? Yeah, so the Fed, um, Federal Reserve surprised markets recently with a large and unexpected policy change. When the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, met in December, it increased the Fed's policy rate to from 2.25 to 2.5, a signal that it would raise the benchmark rate another three times, yeah, before stopping. It has 
it has also signaled that uh, it would continue to unwind its balance sheets, blah, blah, blah. And then just below, so I don't know if you can see this, but um, just off the screen, it says, but just six weeks later at the FOMC meeting in January, the Fed indicated it would pause. Let me just, matter of fact, let me just um, see if I can bring this up a little bit so you can see this. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, that's the wrong one. Here we go. All right. So it says, uh, Six weeks later, the Fed indicated that it would pause its rate rises for the foreseeable future, yeah, and suspend its balance sheet, blah, 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 right. So instead of hiking rates, now they're just holding rates at 2.5, yeah, which is a bit dovish, a bit change in policy, but what were the European Central Bank looking to do? So the European Central Bank reacts to recession threats by keeping interest rates low so there was even talk of recession the european central bank has reacted to the threat of a recession across the eurozone there's no re there was no recession talk right with the U with the us economy they were far from a recession actually there might have been i mean the doom and gloomers um you know who were talking about recession and donald trump political and all that kind of stuff it was actually nonsense because you it, for a recession you have to have two negative quarters right of um, GDP growth and in the next slide I'm going to basically show you where the um, the Euro where Europe was was when it came to GDP and where the, um, uh, the the US was but there was talk of a recession right so highlighting a dramatic effect of Donald Trump trade war with China and on, on Europe's manufacturing industry the ECB president marriage argues said he would off also offer cheap loans to Eurozone's troubled banks, right? So it's nothing, it's, it's, it's basically, he's talking about um, keeping the currency as cheap as possible. So again, it's like the dog with the least fleets, yeah? There are um, things happening all around the world, trade wars, Brexit, etc., that are gonna be affecting all countries, yeah? But which country is best placed to weather the storm? Is it the US or is it, Europe that's the question you have to ask yourself and it was clearly the US yeah so again April and let's see what's happened in April so April right we get to April and we look at GDP growth so Europe was at 0.4 percent so remember zero by the way zero growth or negative growth two quarters of negative growth equals um, a recession so the closer you are to zero the closer you are to recession right so europe we're at 0.4 percent gdp growth rate growth the us on the other hand were at around in april around three percent yeah three percent growth so again who's closer to recession negative you know uh, two quarters of negative growth europe or us it's got to be europe right so and then you know the, the numbers are the numbers regardless of what conspiracy theory you believe the numbers are the numbers so again in uh april trump calls on the fed to cut rates by one percent and urges more quantitative easing this was due to really the fed um and uh, sorry the uh donald trump i should say um was uh in a bit of a uh his, you know with his trade wars with china he actually wants he wanted a cheaper dollar and i'm not gonna necessarily going to get into this but he was putting pressure on the federal reserve to potentially cut rates um so he can have um, a bit of a competitive advantage in negotiating with china because china have a cheap currency um, and uh, long and short of it is Donald Trump is trying to bring jobs back to America and manufacturing back to America, but he can't compete with China because businesses can manufacture, um, you know, their goods in China and obviously export from China to the rest of the world because their currency is very cheap. If I'm a manufacturer, I'm not manufacturing my goods in America because it's too expensive. That's the long and short of it. So, um, but overall, everything was you know was uh, was is okay for for the uh, for the dollar and we can see again interest rates in April two point five percent still 
and in Europe it was still at zero. Now, European Central Bank holds interest rates as Draghi warns of downside risks. So again, the ECB has been forced to backtrack on its plans to tighten monetary policy in recent weeks amid intensifying climate of economic gloom, right? So interest rates, um, da 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 da, euro stood little changed and it talks about the uh, European Central Bank um, standing fire, holding fire on interest rates, but um, it's been forced to backtrack on its plans to tighten monetary policy amid intensifying um, economic gloom. Because I think what they were talking about earlier was that they wanted to try potentially to raise rates towards the end of the year, um, or look to anyway, but obviously doom and gloom, Econo the economy not doing so well, yeah, um, they can't. So again, risks to the downside etc etc where whereas the dollar they're all probably seeing risks as well but not um, as severe as europe let's also take a look at what the technicals were saying because it's all good looking at the uh, fundamentals but i know a lot of you are going well what's happening on the price chart at the time well we can see pretty much beginning of the year right beginning of the year 2019 what was occurring so we had a bit of a downtrend, didn't we? All we needed to do was literally look for pullbacks into supply zones. Ignore, I, I was ignoring the, uh, the demand zones and just looking at shorting because in order for me to buy the US dollar against the Euro, I have to press sell on my broker, which is supply, yeah? So um, if you're buying the uh, quote currency, you have to press sell. So. This was just a case of waiting for prices to pull back into past supply zones, right? And then looking for buying opportunities on the dollar, yeah? This is where the uh, the money has been made. That's not to say that you couldn't have made money buying the euro, but would that have been the best decision to make? Yeah, you got to think about, you know, if you're buying weakness, it's not not necessarily a high probability trade. Yes, prices did go up and prices always, you know, pull back and retrace because banks and financial institutions and the smart money are not buying at lows. They're going to be buying at highs. This is where they need to buy. So um, without getting into market manipulations too much, iceberg orders, slippage and liquidity, um, prices will pull back. Yeah, and when it does, what you do is, and we don't know whether this supply zone is going to work. Again, we've got to think in terms of probabilities. But if the dollar is stronger than the um, than the euro, and we have belief in our fundamentals, then we use the technicals to time our entries. And this is pretty much up to you know the whole of April into May. So um, so yeah. You know, the fundamentals driving price. Price doesn't indicate value. Value isn't always reflected in price. Yeah, price is not the be all and end all. Yeah, um, we need to understand what's going on beyond uh, technical analysis and then time our entry. So, moving on to May. Moving on into May. So, May, the Fed defies Trump and holds interest rates, right? US Fed fires Trump and holds interest rates. So again, Fed were holding interest rates at 2.5%. Um, and then we had an ECB um, uh, article, which was basically saying low interest rates to stay, banks should merge. And then um, it says the interest, uh, European Central Bank are likely to, uh, interest rates are likely to stay low for a long time and banks in the euro area should consolidate and step up efforts to improve profitability if you scroll down low interest rate environment is with us for the foreseeable future and is caused in large part by uh, durable structural factors yeah so again doom and gloom for europe more than you know it would be when it comes to you know the fed and uh, and and america right so 
in June, the Fed opens the door to interest rate cuts after Trump criticism. And so the Fed now are deciding that potentially um, there are headwinds um, going on with um, you know the economy, etc. And there's a bit of pressure going on. Remember, these guys are forward thinking, so they're seeing the risks of the trade war potentially take effect on the US economy. Again, no one knows exactly how it's going to affect the economy, but the Fed have to be forward thinking and take um, all um, you know uh, data into consideration. So in order for them to uh, you know kind of protect the US economy, yeah, and boost the spending and, and, and et cetera, they have to be forward thinking and potentially open the door for interest rate cuts. Whereas the dollar, sorry, the euro dollar, right? Um, it, they talk about uh, the euro, Mario Draghi starts talking about uh, the euro steady, but inflation data poses awkward questions for ECB. CPI more than unwinds Easter bump ahead of Thursday's ECB. UBS says the market inflation expectations hit lowest since early 2016. So inflation expectations are the lowest, um, you know, and uh, with, low ex with low inflation means potentially uh, stimulus because they need to reach their 2% inflation target and if interest uh if the inflation targets are actually low then um potentially they uh they can't uh, raise interest rates so uh, the euro supported by fed rate cut talk but analysts doubt this will last long so what's happening is or what happened is um in june i think we we're in june was the fact that the fed would then start talking about rate cuts and the the the, uh, the european central bank were um probably a bit more silent on their policies so you know, there was maybe a kind of maybe a sentiment shift, right, in, um, in, in, you know, potential strength and weakness, but the data didn't really support that, right? So the euro was stable against weak dollar on, the, on Tuesday, um, even after inflation date for the month of May surprised sharply to the downside. There you go. So, so inflation was to the downside, potentially posing an awkward question for the European Central Bank, ECB on Thursday, although the single currency is currently focused on events across the Atlantic. So Eurozone inflation fell to 1.2 in May from 1.7. So they're getting further and further away from their inflation target of 2%. So this is, again, this is below the market consensus for a reading of 1.4 as more then unwinds 30 basis points increase etc so um the europe you know europe and america have their problems and again i'll repeat this it's like the dog with the least fleas yeah so what uh, uh country even though they're both going through problems has the worst problems who has the worst who has the most amount of fleas right and uh so you have to try and bet on the dog with the least fleas so uh, at the moment, it's the European Central Bank are in a worse situation than the US, regardless of whether the focus, you know, was on um, them cutting rates. Remember, they're cutting rates to 2.25. If they have low, inf if the European Central Bank have low inflation, they can't. They haven't got any rates to cut because their interest rates are already at zero. So they have to introduce stimulus, which is basically. Um, a very severe form of trying to cheapen their currency and weaken their currency. Yeah. So, uh, again, uh, they're both in the same boat, but the uh, European Central Bank is definitely a lot worse than the Fed, um, you know, into July. So July, big banks um, signal Fed cuts may not be so great for them. And then it talks about JP Morgan, Wells Fargo spent time on Tuesday describing their earnings outlook. Um, if if the Fed cut rates, right, which I think they obviously ended up doing. And it talks about how uh, the banks will be probably impacted potentially, um, you know, if they do cut rates. Um, a few of the largest banks on Tuesday warned investors of the effect of multiple interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve could have on their bottom lines throughout 2019. So there was definitely talk again of Fed cuts. But again, what was happening in Europe? So Europe. ECB signals it will move to boost growth amid fears of low inflation. So outgoing president says outlook is worsening and inflation is well below target. So again, you've got the European Central Bank um, not doing so well and the Fed doing better, even though they're not doing so well.
And let's also look at the data that supports this as well. So again, going back to the GDP, Euro growth rates, we are in July. So GDP ended up coming in at, I think around uh, 0 0.2. Get the tool out, yeah. So about 0 0.2 right there, not great at all. Whereas GDP for the US was at two percent. So you can see the divergence in 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 GDP growth rate. The US is doing a lot better, and in fact, the uh, the Europe are closer to you know zero when it comes to you know their economy growing, and they don't want to go into the minus. Because then that would be, you know, two uh, negative quarters would be the recession. So, again, people were talking about the U.S. inflation, and I was saying this to all the traders. I said, do not think that the U.S. is going into um, a recession before Europe. Right? Europe will go into recession way before. Um, um, uh, with the probabilities anyway, the chances of that happening, um, the Europe will go into recession uh, before uh, the US because they are closer to negative interest rates. So again, we're looking at inflation as well. So inflation around July, inflation for the Eurozone in July was around 1%. Again, further from their 2% target. And whereas the US in July was at 1.8%. Yeah, so they're closer to their 2% target, aren't they? Yeah. So again, nothing for the US to worry about. If you're on, if you're looking at a price chart, right, which we're going to look at in a sec, why are we you know, uh, are worried about um, or looking to buy the euro. So let's go to the next slide and look at the chart. So um, we've got July and let's break it down. So uh, we already had in, in kind of May, June, there was the Fed were talking about, um, you know, uh, having to cut interest rates and uh, it probably had a bit of an effect obviously on price, but overall, again, all we were doing was looking for levels to get short at. There was a few pips in here. This is a daily chart, by the way, so maybe a, a couple of hundred pips in there. Again, maybe that move didn't work there, but again, just get short around here. And then we understand that we should be getting short and trying to ignore, you know, demand zones, regardless whether, you know, prices go higher is that or was that the best decision when you understand what was going on fundamentals a lot, a lot of traders will say things like i'm a trend trader yet you know they don't understand the, the, the bigger trend or they they don't follow it through they're not disciplined enough to follow it through and yes we may have have had to wait you know uh, a day or two or even a week or two in order to get short at certain areas but this is where the trend was it was to the downside yeah so Again, fundamentals, you know, coming in, there's always going to be some short term sentiment plays when it comes to um, when it comes to, you know, prices pulling back, etc. That's just, you know, what the market does. But overall, the bigger picture, it was really, uh, you know, trying to get short at supply zones. So moving into August and August, the Fed's mild rate turn crushes US inflation expectations. So this was about um, US investors and inflation expectations were hammered on Thursday, a day after the Fed, um, you know, cut interest rates for the first time since 2008, while Chairman Jerome Powell signaled the central bank had not entered it, um, into an outright easing cycle. So um, President Donald Trump threats for more tariffs on Chinese goods eroded investors confidence on whether domestic inflation would ever reach the Fed's 2% goal, analysts said. So there was a bit of uh, problems, you know, with the with the Fed and, in, and reaching their inflation targets. But when you again, when you compare that to, um, you know, Europe, Again, a combination of measures may be needed to prop up the Eurozone economy as recent indicators paint an even bleaker picture of the outlook. So European Central Bank policymakers said their July meeting, the accounts of the meeting showed on Thursday with growth and inflation slowing for months. ECB President Mario Draghi has all but promised more stimulus 
as soon as September. So he's going into, he can't cut rates, yeah? All central banks, yeah, at the, this year, I say all central banks, but most central banks, apart from maybe Canada, the Canadian Central Bank have entered into an interest rate cutting cycle. They all want a cheaper currency and a cheaper currency isn't bad. A cheaper currency is actually very useful because um, what it does is it boosts exports um, for the country. Yeah, So um, a cheap currency isn't terrible. It's not a bad thing. It's actually quite a good thing. And hence the reason why Donald Trump has been, you know, putting pressure on the Fed to cut rates to make the currency cheaper so that they can boost uh, US exports. But again, dog with the least fleas, which one is worse, is worse off and as bad as this one actually sounds, this, this report actually sounds in August, yeah, it sounded quite bad. Who's worse off? The Fed or you know the European Central Bank, Europe or America? Again, it has to be America. Um, sorry, America. It has to be uh, Europe because you know Europe haven't can't even cut rates. They're going to introduce stimulus, right? They're going to introduce stimulus, which is basically quantitative easing, which is a severe form where they haven't you know of, of cheapening and weakening their currency to uh, to achieve their two percent inflation target and also you know um, stimulate the economy. So moving into September, September. So uh, rate, Fed rates, interest rate cuts don't hurt, but analysts don't see rates help to U.S. auto sales. So this basically, this is basically talking about um, a piece. It's talking about the Federal Reserve um, cutting rates last week, uh, but they're not rejoicing either. And it was more, and I remember this, it was more to do with uh, more of an insurance cut. There really wasn't an, an, a need to cut rates. They were kind of um, looking forward into the future, as they always do, but just kind of anticipating more um, what a rate cut would do for the economy to keep the economy, you know, uh, ticking over nicely. Whereas the European Central Bank announces fresh stimulus right as eurozone economy falters and the european central bank had announced fresh st uh, a fresh stimulus package in an attempt to prevent the fragile eurozone economy from grinding to a halt with an interest rate cut and plans to bump to pump 20 billion a month into the financial um, market so again they're worse off yeah as much as the fed are cutting rates which Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia were cutting rates. Uh, the um, the uh, Res uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand were cutting rates. Uh, central banks around the world are also cutting rates. But there are three central banks who can no longer cut rates with major ones, which is the European Central Bank, um, the, um, where well, they can cut rates, but uh, to go into negative interest rates, but they don't really necessarily want to. Um, but you also have the, uh, the Bank of Japan, which are already in negative interest rates, and also the Swiss National Bank, who are also in negative rates. So a positive cut, and when I say a positive cut, uh, rates that are in the positive that are being cut is less worse than, um, you know, a, a central bank introducing stimulus, right? This is... Uh, stimulus in September, um, which was very bad for the um, for the European Central Bank, and then we enter into October. Yeah, October's fundamentals. So risk of recession isn't high as long as Fed gets the policy right. So this is the probability of a recession, and this was I think the second in command. Fed's number two says consumers have cushioned uh, with high savings rate, and he goes into basically talking about the recession, the risk of a recession remains low with appropriate monetary policy, uh, Clarida said during a question and answer session sponsored by the Wall Street Journal. So Clarida stressed the economy is in a good place with stable inflation. Financial conditions are also not tight. Um, in addition, the savings rose to 8.1, etc., etc. Right. So he's saying that they're in a good place. What are the European Central Bank saying, right? So ECB are saying they must be careful about the about further interest rate cuts. So they just introduced stimulus, right? So um, it's saying that the European Central Bank must be careful in lowering interest rates further, given the risk um, of unintended side effects. Italian Central Bank chief, um, not in in I'm not even going to attempt to say that. Uh, Visco said um, on Thursday, and it talked about the ECB cutting rates to interest 
to minus 0.5 um, and the market's pricing the further cuts for the coming years in the face of exceptionally weak inflation pressures. Yeah, So they're already in a bad place. Right, they're already in a bad place. So Visco considered a dove in ECB's rate setting governing council, noted that negative rates hurt banks, which ultimately transmits monetary policy to the real economy. So lower rates could prove counterproductive. And they're trying to basically downplay um, the need or talk down down talk the need for further um, uh, uh, weakening of the currency. So again, you've got divergence clear divergence between you know um the number two in command and the uh italian central banker uh you know in in tone right so let's look at the actual data you know in the third quarter right and into october right we have again let's pull this over you have the european central bank uh gdp growth rate i should say looking at this the european central bank is looking at growth rate GDP as 0.2% again, right? Whereas you have the um, the US economy is looking at at least above 2% growth rate. I think it was like 2.1 or something like that, 2.2. So again, there's a clear divergence in where the countries are in their economic cycle. And also as well, when we look at inflation, in October, look at inflation for Europe. Inflation for Europe pretty much dropped to below, uh, was that maybe 0 0.7 or something like that maybe? Yeah, something like 0.7% inflation for Europe. And when you look at, again, in October, 1.8% inflation rate. 1.8% inflation rate, yeah, for the US. So again, they're closer to their 2% target and the European Central Bank are way off. They're down here and they need to get somewhere up here, yeah, above there anyway. So again, you've got divergence in policies. Who's worse off? And I keep repeating myself, but, um, you know, this needs, you need to actually understand this is how the market works you know it is not some you know there's no they're not looking at price they're not you're nowhere in here yeah have you ever heard a central banker talk about pin bars against support and resistance yeah you've never heard someone say engulfing candles and refer to you know any kind of indicators right as to you know why they're going to be strengthening or cheapening the currency yeah they do they control the currency and then we see it on a price chart so then let's, let's go look at a price chart so from august september october third quarter three quarters um you know we saw in september that the european central bank started introducing stimulus right and again in the lead up to stimulus this was anticipated yeah, this is all anticipated because we knew from July, from May, etc., that this was going to happen. So September, this is where they introduced stimulus. Prices started, you know, going down, pulling back. You sell at supply. Yeah, start pulling back, etc. Right, and again, markets don't go down forever. There was some probably some sentiment plays in October. Right, where um, you know again pullbacks. The banks don't want to buy at lows. What they're looking for is pullbacks and they scale in, etc. And all we're looking to do is buy at levels of supply. Does every supply zone work? No, you know, because again, there could have been some, you know, negative sentiment data for the US in these uh, situations right here in between, you know, the, the bigger picture, right? So it is what it is, but our bias is still to the downside. It's still always to the downside. So again fundamentals in play yeah as we, uh, we we choose our direction we wait for prices to come into those areas and then we decide whether we want to be you know selling there or if we see a, an entry trigger you know for us to get short and i ended up getting short around here and i think making around about uh, about 13 to 1 on this one recently into november so um lost a couple of times here maybe once or twice but you know, it pays off in the end, just a bit of patience. So let's go into November. So November, 
right? So the Fed is on hold for now, but it might not take much to change that. So Fed and the market for now are on the same page and expecting interest rates to hold steady for a while. Right? So they're not looking to cut rates anymore. They're not looking to weaken their their, their economy, sorry, their, 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 their currency. Um, the economy is on decent footing, as said by you know the Fed. Um, expectations for one to three more cuts in 2020 with, uh, strategy, strategy, with, with one strategy, strategist, sorry, apologies, <laughs> um, even seeing a possible hike ahead. Okay, so potential hike. So uh, interest rates are on hold for now. Federal Reserve officials have indicated um, as much as the market believes. Uh, but the state of affairs could be fleeting amid an ever-changing set of economic conditions. And that's what I alluded to before. So what they do is they have to look at the data and then adjust their positions. Just because they say they're going to cut or hold or hike doesn't mean that they will. They have a certain narrative and then they're looking for data to confirm that narrative and if it doesn't confirm it does the opposite then what do you think is going to happen they're going to have to do the opposite and that's what we do we just look at to see what the uh, the data holds so pretty much everyone is convinced that the fed is finished for 2019 which they have been um uh, a year which in which it cut its benchmark rate three times to a range of 1.5 to 1.75. What happens in 2020 though is open wide to interpretation, and um, it says in congressional ter um, testimony last week, the Fed Jerome Powell said current policy is likely to remain appropriate. So basically, we're going to hold as long as growth continues and inflation trends to two percent. Yeah, and we have the European Central Bank um, in contrast admits its rock bottom interest rates threaten financial stability. Well, so again, some different um, uh, uh, difference in contrast between, um, you know, the uh, the problems of the Fed and the problems of the European Central Bank. And I think Christine Lagarde, obviously, she's now the uh, new European Central Bank. And it says the European Central Bank has admitted that its own record low uh, interest rate is destroying banks' profits and poses a key threat to aligning regions' financial stability risks to the euro. If you're an investor, where are you placing your money? Where are you putting your money? Right, with the dollar or with the um, uh, with the uh, European Central Bank, right? It says as negative rates squeeze savers across the eurozone and make it impossible for them to earn inflation beating returns. So again, it's it's making they can't even put their money in the euro and hold it under you know their their mattress because um, inflation is eroding their uh, their currency. So what do you think is going to happen to the euro, the euro then becomes a funding currency like the yen where they, you know, borrow euros and then they put it into, a, they put their currency and in, or their investment into a, um, a higher yielding currency or asset because they're getting nothing for the euro. Yeah, they're getting absolutely nothing. In fact, it's worse because, you know, of inflation, right? And then we are into December, December. So the Fed stands pat on rates, expects no change in 2020. And the ECB keeps policy unchanged with doors still open to more stimulus. So again, you've got some diverging policies right there at the moment. And again, you have the Fed, yeah, the Fed, FED, right? Holding rates, yeah, holding rates, everything's okay. Whereas the ECB, right are trying to potentially or maybe potentially weakening their currency with more stimulus right more stimulus more weakening of the currency so again who's in the worst position yeah who is in the worst position um i keep answering the question and i guess where we are now and let's go to probably like a live chart now and let's see you know what's happened so live chart where we are in December, yeah, December the 13th uh, was last week. I'm recording this on the weekend and you can see pretty much where, you know, prices are falling away, prices and prices again don't indicate value. Prices have to pull back. When prices pull back, this is where the bargains are. These are where the potential bargains are. It was a bargain here and it looks like it's going to be a bargain there. If prices come up, it's a bargain there. 
bargains are very difficult to um, to to actually determine just technically because if you don't understand what's going on fundamentally, then how are you supposed to determine? You know what really is a bargain yes we've had a bit of an uptrend over the past you know uh, week or two but look at what's happened in 2019 this is just a pullback for traders like myself who understand the fundamentals who understand value who understand that the euro price doesn't indicate value and the, the, the more prices come up and get you know cheaper for the dollar the more I want to be a buyer at these areas of supply. Because overall, when I'm looking at what's happening in policies and what's going on when it comes to GDP, interest rates and inflation, you know, it's it's a no brainer literally to just, you know, stay short until the data changes. So what is in store for the euro dollar in 2020? More of the same, a change in shift? What do you think? Me personally, more downside. Um, but, uh, you know, we have to, you know, obviously understand what's, what's going on with the data and uh, any kind of, you know, shifts in that. And uh, one of the things that I use at Trading 180 is our fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which has pretty much been spot on when it comes to rating and ranking the euro dollar. And what we do is um, we get macroeconomic data like the GDP, interest rates and inflation and others. And, uh, you know, we uh, basically put it in a spreadsheet, which is created by a gentleman by the name of Shane. Thank you very much, Shane, if you're watching this. And uh, what it does is it ranks the countries based on mac certain macroeconomic data and uh, number one being the states this is our buy this is strength anything that is one two and three we look to buy and anything that is eight you know six seven and eight are the weaker currencies and this is what we use to sell and again this is updated and uh you know certain rankings shift depending on you know what economic data comes out and the numbers so just because the euro area is number eight now doesn't mean it's going to stay number eight for the foreseeable future depending on what happens with inflation interest rates gdp and others but for now we pick our um our currency pairs that we want to you know get trade and get short on strength versus weakness based off of our fundamental analysis spreadsheet and it's kept us in good stead it's kept us in good stead um, and understanding you know it's pretty much predicted you know uh, this uh, the downtrend yeah say so predicted but it's uh, you know kept me short anyway this whole year I haven't bought a single uh, you know euro against the uh, against the dollar this year and uh, so if you do want to get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and myself where I go over you know my fundamental analysis pretty much every day in our discord group you can go to trading180.com and uh, sign up there and uh, you can look for more information or you can email me at info at trading180.com I know this is a bit of a long one but I hope you enjoyed it. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And this is the level of analysis that we do on each of the currency pairs, each of them. Every country is analyzed, is scrutinized, um, you know, GDP, inflation, interest rates, and others. And we go through in-depth analysis to choose the best currency pairs um, to, and the ones that are most likely to trend all range because we have both trending and ranging strategies, technical strategies. We go over manipulations, how to take advantage of traders through capture pain relief in a zero sum game. All of that is more than just supply and demand technical analysis. So guys, hope you have a great Christmas. Um, probably gonna be one of my last videos for this year. And uh, yeah, guys have a great one and uh, take care.